this tutorial I'm going to explain to you how to set up a working FastDL server. Um, the most important part of this whole tutorial is that you have a working web server. Um, if you don't have this, then you'll probably have to look into alternatives such as Steam Workshop Collection. This is a free service provided by Steam where you can upload maps, materials, and even models. But um, if you do have a working web server, then this tutorial might actually be useful for you. First, navigate to your web installation. Um, this could be accessible via FileZilla if it's on a remote server that's only accessible by FTP. Uh, the principle will be mostly the same, uh, except that I'm using Windows Explorer to navigate to my um, documents collection. Uh, make sure it's started, that the web server is accessible. Um, once you know that is, then you can create a new folder called FastDL, for example. You can call it anything you want, even, even files, but just make sure it's, uh, it's clearly identified that this holds all your uh, contents. Now, you can have any type of materials on there. Like I said, you can have materials, models, maps. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to keep it to maps because that's the most um, most commonly used uh, feature of the FastDL. Um, to use this, you have to create a new folder called maps in your FastDL directory. Um, and then you have to make sure you have the .bsp files in there. Um, I have a few in my Steam CMD installation right here. As you can see, the, the directory names have to correspond to exactly what's in your Gary's Mod path. Um, this is the same for the dedicated server as well as the normal Gary's Mod client. Um, since we're looking at maps, I'm going to take a few maps from here. GM Construct will usually be in the client's directory by default, but I'm just going to use it to show a little bit about compression and how exactly it works. Um, if you want to use, um, for example, uh, there's no models in here, but you can create a new directory called models where you put everything in. When um, things are downloaded to the client, the client will create a new folder called download, and in there it will simply create a new folder called maps, and all your map downloads go in there. Okay, what you need to do um, for your FastDL is you can have the maps on here by default with a .bsb extension. This is the raw map file, and it will be able to download this. But since we're looking at um, a lot of data transfer, a lot of people will be downloading these files. You might want to compress them so to reduce bandwidth. Um, even if you don't have anything to do with bandwidth, for example, if you have an unmetered connection, it's still recommended to compress your files so that Clients have faster download speed and so that you use less space on your FastDL host. Um, you can do this with uh, bzip2. Uh, um, this is uh, by default included in 7-zip, so you have to download this program for it. Uh, if it's on your local computer, then you can simply right-click 7-zip, add to archive, and then, um, oh sorry, you have to click one per one, and then add to archive, and select bz2 here. Uh, click OK and it will add it to the .bz2 file. Um, now if you have a lot of files that you want to compress at the same time you don't want to do this for every file in here. So I made a little tool that you can use. It's um, in the release that I posted on Facepunch. I'll put a link in the description. If you have downloaded the zip file then extract it you'll get to uh, other tools. Pack any bat. It's a batch file that will simply, um, it's, it's a really simple batch file. It will look into the directory that the file you drag on it and then simply 7-zip um, with a command line to a .bzip2 file. To get this to work you have to make sure the path to your 7-zip installation is correct. Now mine is on the on my D drive. Uh, once that is correct, you can simply close it. Um, and what you have to do is if you launch it like this, it will explain to you what you have to do. Uh, you have to drag on any of the files. Uh, it can be any in this folder. Uh, so drag it on here, and it will simply recognize all the files in there and start compressing them. Now, depending on how large your maps are and how many maps you have, this might take quite a while. Um, I only have three, and they're not too big, so it's 
pretty fast. Plus, I have a octa-core CPU, so it might uh, go a lot faster than if you have, for example, a dual core. When they're all compressed, you can click on type here and delete any file that's not a BZ2 file because these are really all the files that you need to have on your FastDL. You don't need to leave the .bsps on here because the client will automatically recognize this um, to download this. Now, the remaining thing that you have to do is navigate to your Steam CMD installation. For me, it's right here. Go to your config directory and open up server.cfg. You have to set your download URL to a working um, link. For me, this is a local uh, web host, so the path to it for me would be, let's open up notepad, it would be localhost slash fastdl. If you have a remote server, you would, if you have a domain, you could have something like domain.com slash fastdl. Or even if you just have a simple um, VPS, for example, without a domain, you'll have some sort of IP, it can be completely random now, this is not possible. <laughs> but it, it might look something like this. This is just a complete random IP address that I just thought of. Um, but it would point to your, to your host and then slash fastdl for your folder right here. Um, don't add a trailing slash because the way this works is the, the client, when it connects, it will receive the SV download URL from the server. So for example, it would receive this. And what it does is when it wants to download, when it, when it sees the server is, for example, playing bopslope v2, and the client notices, hey, wait, I'm missing this map, then it will look um, at the path, it will see its own maps, and it will take this piece right here, and it will append it to the, to the download URL, so you'll get a path like this. Now, what it, since the um, FASDL also of, uh, it has support for compression, and we'll also check for this file by default. So the resulting path of this would be the download URL plus this. Um, as you can see, this file exists, so we'll simply download it, and the client will extract it from the compressed file. So what you have to set in your as you download URL on the client will be this path, not with a slash. Now for me, this is a local. It will only work if I set it to this because I don't have my um, web installation port forwarded. And once this is set up, you can close this. Um, and when this is all done, you can connect and you will see that it will download the file. Um, you can stop watching here, but I'm going to continue with a small uh, tutorial on, your, on the content delivery network. For the content delivery network, you need a small PHP script that I have provided in my release. Um, this is on, again on the facepunch thread. I have it downloaded right here. You can open the zip file and navigate to your websites. Then simple CDN FASDL script. It's really nothing more than just one PHP file. You can extract it to your FASDL folder and open it up. Um, there's a few things that you have to change. Really, all you have to do is change the US and the EU path to your, um, to your host as well as the default download URL. You should probably leave this to US because, well, I, I've set the default to be US on those three parts because US is the most common, um, like most people that play Gary's Mod live in the US. So it's the, it's the best to set this uh, to US. Uh, so everyone by default will be redirected to this. Um, now, I don't have a working host in the EU, so both of my paths for now will be localhost slash fastdl. Like this. Again, you don't have to put the, um, the slash here. I'll briefly explain how the script works. Um, it relies on your, your fastdl download URL being set to the index.php file instead of a direct path to your file. So it will look like this. This is very important. This is essentially how the whole thing works, how it knows what file to download. Uh, make sure it ends with the equal sign. Now what it does, like I just explained in the notepad file, is it will 
take the download URL and then append the path like maps bhop slope v2.bsp.bz2. And what it does when you set the index.php file is it will set the path to this, uh, the path variable to that. So as you can see here, it will get the path part of the URL, which will be this. Uh, see if it's set, if it's not empty, and if the base is not empty. Now the base is what we have retrieved here. By default, it will take the US one. Um, if we have a session, which we won't have by default, uh, so we're first going to check here. Uh, it's going to get your geographic location based on your IP address. This gets the IP address of the connecting client. Uh, it uses this website right here. It's a free online website that provides geographic location in a G JSON format. Uh, and it will fetch this, it will parse it, and it will take your continent code. Um, again, this will return US by default if it's not able to connect to there here. Um, but if it is able to, you will get a correct continent for your location. Now, then here, let's see, where was I? Um, it will compare it to EU. If you're in the EU, it will take this path. If you're in the not in the EU, it will take US. So if you're outside of the Europe or outside of America, uh, the United States, I mean, um, you will still be redirected to this path. If you want to add other continents, you can simply add them to this array. Um, then once it's retrieved this, it will set your session to this base URL. So that if you have, for example, 100 files to download, you don't have to connect to this every time. It will simply uh, increase your download speed. Um, as you can see, that this is what it does here. If it has set the session, then it will simply copy the base path from your session. So it doesn't call this again. Then um, it will create a new URL. So this will really consist out of your path. I'm in Europe, so I'm going to take this path. And then it will append, as you can see, which is done by the PHP operator dot. It will append this to it. So the full path that you will be redirected to is this, which will point to here and simply download the right file. That's really all it does. It's a very simple script. Um, what is important, though, is that if you have uh, a Gary's Mod server in America, you have to make sure that this download URL path also points to your American host. And for the Europe one, you'll have to set it to your European host. So essentially, this index.php file has to be on both your web hosts. And for the US one, you'll have to set this to US. And if you upload this to your EU host, you'll have to set it to EU. Because most people that will connect to the server um, in the EU will be redirected to the EU path and then look at this again. So that's one thing that you, you, you shouldn't do. You shouldn't set it to uh, America if the whole server is in the EU. Next to that, there isn't really much configuration to it. Um, again, it's a very simple index.php path. Uh, one important thing, though, is if your web server doesn't support PHP, then there's really no use to set the script up. But most web servers nowadays support it, so uh, you shouldn't worry too much. Uh, then that's really it. Um, you can test this in-game. It should work. If it doesn't, then try to go over what, what what's wrong. You can debug it by, for example, checking if the script is working at all. You can um, use PHP file writing to actually write a file when it's accessed, but I'm not going to explain too much about it. You'll have to have some PHP knowledge yourself in order to actually see why it's wrong. If it's simply not working and you don't know why, I suggest you abandon the whole content delivery network idea and simply revert to just keeping this set to Europe slash fastdl so that will still work. That's, uh, that's about it. Thank you for watching.